Hello, and welcome to Do Dancing Clams. This is a Blender 3.3 tutorial video showing how to UV unwrap procedurally generated mesh that has variable geometry. The technique uses edge normals and, as there is no built-in method to display edge normals in Blender, a viewer for them is also included. The technical details for the UV unwrapping and the UV map viewer come straight from Johnny Matthews' video, which is linked below. What I have added is a method to let this work with variable levels of subdivide mesh and the method to visualize the normals. And some technical details which we're about to talk about right now. This is where becoming familiar with the spreadsheet and using store named attribute to store data that you want to look at is the only way you're going to succeed innovating it with geometry nodes. So the whole thing about UV unwrapping is uh, this is the node, and I'm going to go start at the beginning and go through this in order, but I just wanted to let, let, let you know where we're going. So UV unwrap does that, just that, um, and it does it based on a Boolean equation you give it that describes the scene. What I noticed was I didn't want to unwrap based on index positions because this thing has variable geometry and the index positions change. You might be able to come up with a formula form, you might not, but that's not the way I wanted to go about it. What I did notice was this angle along the top is consistent across every edge. And if I knew the direction the normal was facing, I could just select based on the normal. Matter of fact, I could just select based on the Z value of the normal, which is what I've done. Now, and I thought because the UV map gets generated and gets pumped into a star named attribute for use later on in the shader editor. And this only works if you're using, if you save the data as onto the face corner domain. Then I thought, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and use the face corner. And, look, and if I store the normal, I'll give it a name. And I look over here and here are the normals. Uh, the ones on top are pointing straight up in the Z direction and everything else is pointing straight out to the side. And I tried based on this and nothing worked. What I eventually determined was this UV on map, when it comes back through this logic and accesses this normal, the domain that it asks for the normal from is the edge domain, not vertex, not face corner. So if I want to generate, if I want to see what data this is actually going to be dealing with, I really want to go to the edge domain and then view the edges. And now you can see, here's my UV normal here and my UV normal here. Um, you can see that um, some of them point straight out. There's no Z value. Some of them point a little up, 0.3 Z value, and some of them point a lot up, 0.6. And that corresponds to the red lines are the edge normal viewer I made. Um, the ones along the bottom point straight out with no Z component. The ones halfway up these faces point a little out with the 0.3332 Z value, and the ones I'm interested in point a little bit more up in the Z with the 0.664 value. And that is the math I'm basing the seam selection on. Make sure that the node wrangler is on. It is. Now, when I said there's no way to look at the edge normals, that might have surprised some people. Let's go ahead and go into edit mode. And if we come up here, you can see we have several normals we can look at. You can look at the face normals in the light blue. You can look at the vertex normals, the dark blue, and you can look at the vertex normals in a different way, the magenta. But what you'll notice is of all the normal choices, there is no way to look at the edge normals. So if you want to view the edge normals, you have to create a viewer for it. I'm going to open some geometry nodes. I know I'm going to want the edge normal, so let's go ahead and save that first. I'll grab the normal in the edge domain and save it, but this will also spread to the vertices 
at either end of that edge. Now the secret sauce here is a subdivide mesh. We look at this in wireframe, you'll see the subdivide added a new vertex to the middle of every line. Put it another way, it added a new vertex to the middle of every edge. So we can use these new points as the origin for our edge indicators. And if we grab the normals at that point, that's also the correct value we want to display. So we'll call this edge norm. Feed this all into an instance on points. We'll just create a little line. And I want both endpoints to be at the instance. Later, we'll move one of them to show the direction of the line. Need to realize instances to get access to the splines. And we'll need to set position. The amount we'll offset the point is by the edge normal we saved over here. And we'll use endpoint selection to just pick one end of the line segment. Doesn't matter which one we move. Now we have the beginnings of our indicators. Let's make them a little bit more visible. Now this shows two problems. First problem is we have the points from the original geometry being indicated. We don't want that. We only want the edges to be indicated. And also, if you look at these little triangles here, these correspond to zero length normals that mark the middle of each face. We don't want those either, so we'll have to get rid of them. Now, the first problem is easily dealt with because every time Blender adds vertices to your mesh, it adds them to the end. So all the original vertices are the, are the lowest numbers, and all the new vertices are the higher indexes. So if we select out all the early indexes, we get rid of the, all these original points. So if the index is greater than a certain value, we will not select it. And what value is that? It is the number of points in the original mesh. So if we grab the last index from the original mesh and select it out, that gets rid of all those indicators at the corners. Now we're left with the faces, but that's also easily dealt with. If I mark the edges and only put the indicator on edges, then that will eliminate the faces. And I can do that with a store named attribute. I'll just simply mark all the edges. And combine our index test with an edge test and the phases disappear. And at this point, if you're me, you gather up all this, you put it into a group, and you add it to your asset library. Now it's time to do the actual UV unwrapping. This time we do not want the cube. What I do want is the cute little hexagonal box. Start with a six-sided circle, otherwise known as a hexagon. We'll fill the curve as an n-gon to give it a face. Extrude the face to create a box. I'm going to throw in a subdivide mesh for the future. The UV unwrap works by saving some vectors into the face corner domain and saving that into an attribute. The way we put things into an attribute is a star named attribute. And I'm going to do this twice. 
This first one is just going to be for information. I'm doing this now because this is what we're going to base the math on later, and we're right in the neighborhood, so might as well. This is going to be the important one. So we will be storing vectors. We'll be storing them into the face corner because, again, face corner is where the UV map is going to be looked for. Let's give this a name. UV hex. And UV unwrap is all where the magic happens. Now, if you want a good, clean unwrap, you need to provide a Boolean equation that describes the seam. So even without that, you get an unwrap. So let's add a texture and see what lo that looks like. Shift F1 to get to my library of textures. Scroll on down. I'm going to use a texture I created to avoid all possibility of copyright problems. Because I dragged the texture onto our model, that added it. So now it's available to us here. Let's go into the shader editor. Now usually this would come from the UV map generated, generated with Blender's tools. We don't have this, but what we do have is the data in the attribute field we just created. Grab those vectors. Go into render view. And you can see it's not too bad. It's not, it's better than it would be without the UV unwrapping, but you can see there's some problems here. Let's go back and fix those. Before going on, I'm going to add a way to view the UV map right here. Um, this again, technique came from Johnny Matthews. It's so useful for illustrating where we're going that it's worth doing at this stage. We want to duplicate the faces. Grab a set position. I know I'm going to want to scale the results. And if we grab our UV hex data, so now we're basically taking these, taking these faces and we are moving the faces to align with this UV map. Now we don't see match because the UV map is actually underneath our current model. But you can see there it is. So if we move it outside, just give it a little X offset, and scale it up a bit to make it easier to view. Now when we do our unwrapping, we'll be able to see the results. And we'll be able to see them better if I delete the faces and just leave the edges. So that's our UV map, and that's why it's okay, but it also looks funky. All the, these are the edges, and they'll be stretched, etc. So we need to give ourselves some seams to improve this. Let me add a viewer for the data. So this once again, I'm only concerned with the Z values because that gives us the amount of upness to the normal. So these ones that have no Z value, they're pointing directly out to the side. These are pointing a little ways up. These again are not the ones we're interested in. The normals that mark the edges that we are interested in are these. And you'll see at level zero, they have a slightly different value than they have at level one but they always stay within a range. So let's mark all these as a seam. So this is better. We've isolated the top. The edges are still a problem because they're all connected and they're all wrapping around. 
To fix that, we want to take one of these and make it a seam. The easiest way to do that is we know that because the radius of this thing is 1, then at the farthest extent, like here and here, um, the x-coordinate is going to be 1. So we can just select for that. And there we've got it. So if we select, based on position, the x-coordinate and select the ones that are equal to 1, we separate the mesh down the, the positive x. Uh, this guy over here doesn't get selected because he's negative 1. And now you can see on our UV map over here that the top has been separated and the edges have been separated and our texture looks marvelous. and it even holds up as we increase the detail. Absolutely love to see it. This is the technique I should have used on the stone road, stone path generator. I'm gonna go back and do that and add that to Gumroad. The video I'm referencing here, I'll also link below. Um, I We'll have to make other changes for Blender 3.4, so I'll probably wait till 3.4 is released in December before I do that. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you next time.